Hello, today we're going to talk about password hash and password verify. These are two functions in PHP which you can use to manage the salt and hash of your passwords that you're storing in a table. So if we are going to be collecting information from users, some of that information is sensitive and generally speaking we hash it to make it uh, less vulnerable in the event of a security breach. So we're going to have this table full of all these usernames, all these passwords, and and it's problematic enough to have that stuff just sitting there for us, the developer, but uh, an even bigger concern is if some attacker gets uh, access to that table, it would be good if we didn't have a bunch of usernames and passwords sitting there. Now, if we're going to store usernames and passwords, that's somewhat, I mean, we have to store those somewhere, but we're going to do what we can to make that information more secure, and we're going to use these functions to do that. When I teach about salting and hashing, I like to have people do it manually so you understand what a hash is and you understand what salt does. Uh, I'm not going to do that here today. I'm just going to show you these quick, easy functions built into PHP to handle that for you. And along the way, I can probably illustrate a little bit of the usage of these things, but uh, I'm trying to make this video short. Now, I say that, but this video is going to be anything but short. I mean, it, it'll be kind of short because I'm going to cut out all these parts, but as you'll see, I'm just going to try and cover the essentials to get you up and running with these. So password hash. This is a, a function that you're going to use on the register page. So where you first create that record for your user and you store their password, you're going to use password hash. Password hash generates a string, and uh, it takes two arguments. The first one that you pass it is the, the, the plain text password. The second thing that you pass it is the name of the hashing algorithm that you want to use. There's a whole world of hashing algorithms out there. They're always evolving. There's always new ones. There's always better ones. As computing power becomes more readily available, there's better hashing algorithms, and, the, and we're always defending against new attacks and such. I'm going to use password default, which just means whatever the default hash is in PHP at the time, which is reasonable. The other part of this process is password verify. Password verify is the function that you're going to call on the page where you log in. So this is not about storing the data, this is about retrieving it. Uh, this is related to password hash. It looks like this. It's a Boolean function. It returns true or false. It returns true if the password matches and false if it doesn't. The, this one's harder to explain what it does. I mean, I'm going to try, but it's not going to go well. Uh, what you do is you pass it the plain text password that you just got from that login screen, or what script, whatever. And then the other thing you pass it is the row from the table that corresponds to the user. So this thing generates this big weird string, and that is what you need to pass here. You'll see the this is a little more involved. Password verify is than hash because of the way it works. Um, I'll try and explain a little bit about password hash, that string that it generates. That string that it generates uh, is both the hashed password, the salt, and the hashing algorithm. And it generates a unique salt for each user. So I've talked about it. Let's do it. I'm going to start with the register page. Now, I'm, like I said, I've done a lot of this already. The form already exists. The form processing already exists. I've got a prepared statement down here that I've already written got some try catch blocks in it. I'm not trying to talk about any of that. I'd love to, just not here. I want to make this short enough such that it actually addresses what you want, which is password hash and password verify. So what it does right now is it picks this password straight from the form. User enters it, compares it to password two, sees if it matches. If they match, then I go into here. Um, you can see as this is right now, I'm taking that password that I grabbed from the form and I'm just throwing it right into the table in plain text. I want to show you what that works like or what that looks like. Um, so I'm going to do all A's. Register. Thanks for registering. Let me show you what that looks like in the underlying table. It looks like that. That is what a lack of security looks like. So username, password, email. You see the password sitting there in plain text. Yes, it's a terrible password, but if someone got access to this, they'd know that there's a username A and a password A. And since we, we never should reuse passwords, and this is pretty low-stakes stuff here, but the interesting thing about usernames and passwords is that if I know there's a username A with a password A, they're probably using that username combination, username password combination on a lot of websites. So it's not just about, oh, I'm not doing anything on my website, big deal. We, we have to do what we can to prevent this problem. And if anyone ever gets access to this, it, there might be thousands of rows of usernames and passwords. We got to prevent that, and we're going to prevent that with hashing. 
So I'll show you how we do that. So this function here, it's password hash. It's a very easy function to use. You just pass it the name of the thing that you want to hash, which here is pass one. And the second thing you pass is the name of the hashing algorithm. I'm going to go password default. Remember, that's a reference to whatever PHP deems to be the current password hashing algorithm. Uh, the, calling that function right there does nothing. I need to also save it as something. So I'll say the password that I'm going to store, which I'm calling pass, is going to be whatever I get from this function call. And now instead of passing pass, instead of storing pass one, which was just this plain text password, I'm going to pass the result of calling password hash. I'm going to do that. Now this is more difficult than it sounds like because I've got some unique constraints. So this user is going to be B and their password is going to be A. I'm going to register them, show you the underlying table. And now you understand a little bit about what a hash is. So a hash takes a string or something and it scrambles it up into a big string of nothing, like meaningless stuff to a human. So like this was a big problem. If someone would have gotten access to this table, that would be a disaster. But when we hash it, this doesn't actually say what their password was. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better than this. At least now I can say, well, don't worry, they didn't get access to your uh, password. Now I'll show you the uh, second part of this. So let me talk for like 10 seconds about what a hash is. So a hash is, hash is really just a scheme for scrambling something up. Uh, there is no way to undo a hash. But the thing about a hash is, if you hash A with a given algorithm, it hashes to the same value every time. So I want to make another user with the same password and show you how that works. So now we're doing C's and I go A. Now, if all I was doing was hashing this, it would hash to the same value every time. But What's going on here isn't just a simple hash. You can see it's a different password. So even though they both entered, all these people have A as their password, this is different. And so to, I'll say that one more time. If you hash A with a, a hashing algorithm like SHA-512, it's going to hash to the same value every time. And so you can kind of reverse engineer a password from that. But salting is when you apply something random to that string and then you hash it. So I'm telling you, this isn't just hash, it's salted and hashed. And I can't really do a great job with salting and hashing today. This is literally as far as I can go with it. But notice they have different passwords in terms of this what we're storing in this table because we applied a, a, a unique salt before we did the hash. Now you might also notice that parts of this are the same and parts of it are different. The parts that are the same are the parts that are saying what the hashing algorithm is. Somewhere in there, they have a unique salt and a unique password. I, so I didn't. I said I wasn't going to teach you about salting and hashing, but that's kind of how salting and hashing works. Now what I'm going to do now is head over to the login page. The login page is actually going to be more involved because it's a little less straightforward. That's very straightforward to use. I mean, the rest of this business isn't, but that's beyond the scope of what I'm trying to do. So here on the login page, I've got a username. I've got a pass. So the trick here is that I need to compare this unhashed password with the pas hashed password that I'm storing in that table. In other words, that field right there. So the first thing I have to do is fetch that field. And I'm going to do some PDO for that. I know you didn't sign up for any PDO here, but whatever. That's what you're getting. Uh, select star from PDO login example where uh, uname equals and so I'm doing a prepared statement here. So rather than put a variable, I put a placeholder. Next thing I'm going to do is uh, create a thing called result. And I'm going to do uh, PDO. Prepare that statement. All right. Next thing I need to do is uh, bind a parameter. Okay, in spot one, and it's called uh, uname. Right. If you don't know what a prepared statement is, this is doing nothing for you. There's nothing actually PDO about this. You could, I mean, this is PDO. You could do this in uh, MySQLi. Nothing would be any different. This is just me querying a table. Uh, result execute. 
All right, so at this point, I have uh, said select star from that table where username is whatever they entered. Now, if they enter a username that doesn't exist, that's not going to be an error. It's just going to give me no rows. And if I get no rows, trust me, everything is going to work out just fine. Now, the last part here is so I've executed this query. I want to fetch that row. Now, that row just represents a user, so I'm going to call it user. I oftentimes call this result row. And I'm going to fetch it, so that's going to be a result uh, fetch. That right there will give me the row. And like I said, if this query comes up empty because there's no users by that username, no big deal. It's empty. Trust me, it's not going to cause too many problems. And then whenever you're logging in, it always looks a little like this. So you got to you got to grab that password first, so you can compare it with the thing that they entered. And that means we're going to be doing an if block. And that if block is kind of going to represent the two states. It's either, you know, bad password username, or it is uh, uh, thanks for logging in. And this is where you would do that session information. You see how consistently I stop, I, I don't write echo. Um, so anyways. This is going to be our positive case where great, everything matches. This is going to be, hey, uh, try again. So this is the, well, this was kind of a tricky part because we had to prefetch the row. The other tricky part is here where we use password verify. All right, so password verify is a function. We pass it two things. The first thing we pass it is the plain text password, which in this case is called pass one. And the second thing we pass it is whatever the heck we want to call this field right here. It's called pass. It is under this, it's in this user row and it's a field called pass. It's called pass, lowercase pass, because I called it lowercase pass here. And so what this is going to do is it's going to grab this, which contains the hashed password. It also contains the salt and the hashing algorithm. It's going to apply the salt and the hashing algorithm to pass one, and it's going to compare that with whatever the whole hashed and salted thing is that's stored in the database. I don't know if that made sense or not. It kind of doesn't matter because I don't think I can do a better job of explaining it. Now, I might have some syntax errors. I did write a lot of stuff. I don't want to use A. I can only tell you, let me mention that just before I get. Well, fine, let's do something more exciting. I had a B, right? Let's see if BA works. It does. Here's B, B. That should not work. And it doesn't. Now, here's something that's a lot of fun. If you're new to this, you're going to hate it because you're going to have to deal with it. It's like, it's impossible for me to log in with that A row. See how A, I say, A's pro password is problematic? It's because it's not salted or hashed. And so you have to store it the same way that you retrieve it. And so if I ever make changes to the way I'm salting things or hashing things, I pretty much just have to throw away every row in the table because they're never going to work. I don't know if that added anything to what we were talking about, but basically this is that's the scheme. So password hash is pretty easy to use. I'm just trying to build up some understanding of what it is. Basically, you uh, use password hash to salt and hash your password. You store it in a table. And then on the login page, the first thing you do is fetch the row that corresponds to the user, and then you use password verify to verify whether the password matches. Uh, there's only one last case worth testing out. Let's do user that doesn't exist. And as you see, it's not the end of the world. All that really ends up happening is this comes up empty, this is empty, right? And so nothing happens. So that's how you use password hash and password verify. I think it's good to understand what salt and what hash means. And you don't exactly need to understand what those mean, things mean to use these functions, which should, meet your need, should, which should meet your needs for securing those passwords that you're storing in those databases. Thanks for watching.